It's time that we take a look at Apple's M2 series chipset to see how it performs with streaming and recording operations. I've gone ahead and picked up the M2 MacBook Air in the color Midnight for the man of midnight. Anyways, this newly released M2 MacBook Air laptop has a 13.6 inch display, eight gigabytes of memory, and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Since this is the base model of the M2 MacBook Air series, you guys might've heard that the SSD speeds on this laptop are slower compared to if you upgrade this laptop. So I'm gonna be very curious to see if the recording speeds are affected when trying to capture gameplay. With that said, we're gonna be putting this MacBook Air through a series of tests using Elgato capture cards, OBS, Streamlabs desktop, and more. How's it gonna perform? Is it gonna overheat because it doesn't have a fan? Will the image quality even be good? Let's get it cracking and find out. The first thing that we need to test out here is if we can use capture cards with this laptop. So one of the most popular cards out there, the Elgato H60X and the S Plus capture cards, they can utilize the Elgato game capture software on Mac. So going to their website, we're gonna download it and I'm going into this fully believing that this capture software will not work as Elgato has said that their capture software doesn't work on M1 and M2 chips. Surprisingly, the application launches. I got the HE60X capture card set up and ready to go, and I'm gonna be using my USB-C to USB-C super speed cable to plug it in directly into this MacBook. Now let's select the device dropdown, and there is no HE60X. So that means those of you guys that are using the Chatlink Pro cable, you're not gonna be able to change your HDMI audio input to analog. But how about if we go ahead to OBS's website and download the most recent version and see if we can get the Elgato capture card to work there. As you already know, we have the capture card plugged into this MacBook Air already. So we should just be able to go to our sources, select video capture device, we'll name it Elgato, okay. And let's go to devices and we should be able to select it right here I see it, this is good news. And if we choose it, let's even change the preset to 1920 by 1080, select okay. And there it is, baby, it's popped up and ready to go. For the video settings, we're gonna be testing out a 1080p resolution at 60 FPS. For the output, we're gonna go to the advanced output mode, go to recording format MP4. For the encoder, we're gonna stick with the Apple H.264 hardware encoder. Bit rate, we're gonna go with 15,000. We'll keep the keyframe interval at two, and then profile, let's make that high. And I think we're good to go. Now the hardware encoder on these Mac computers is not meant to be a constant bit rate, which means your bit rate is gonna try to target a certain number and stay there. Really, it's a variable bit rate, which makes it not ideal for streaming, but we'll find out later on in the video if that ends up working. Now it's time to do a little recording test. And looking at the footage I've captured here, I gotta say guys, I am very satisfied with it. We're not skipping frames, it doesn't look blotchy. I can actually tell pretty clearly what's happening in the gameplay. This is solid quality that I'd be happy showing in my own videos. It's clear to me thus far with the tests that we've done that the developers of OBS have found a way to utilize the CPU and graphical components of these M1 and M2 chips to work within the hardware encoder to give us good quality recordings. But that's not all. Let's add in a microphone. We're also adding a web camera to the mix. We gotta push the limits of this computer even further. So that's why I downloaded some graphics off of the sponsor of today's video, own.tv. And we're gonna throw these graphic overlays right into my OBS to see how the computer holds up. Bada boom. Bada bang, we're putting in a transition too, baby. If you're looking for some new OBS overlays to kind of make your stream a little bit more amplified, then check out the link description below for own.tv and get some of these yourself. There's one other very important thing that we're missing here before we even think about trying to do a stream test. Can you think about what that could be? Think about it in your head right now. What, what, what's missing? What have we not touched on? It's, it's audio. It's audio, it's audio, it's audio. Shout out to the folks at Gingercaster because they've created a digital audio device for recording your Mac audio. And when I say your Mac audio, I mean all of your Mac audio. Getting around the Caster application is super easy. The best place to start using this application is right under where it says add. This is where you can apply different application audio sources, microphones, and other additional audio inputs such as a capture card. Within each audio source, you're gonna see two different knobs, the 
left side is gonna be for your stream audio output mix. And then the right side is gonna be the audio output that you hear for yourself. This allows me to easily control the volume between all of my sources. I can choose the device I wanna have my audio output it to by going to the right side and selecting the outputs option and then just select the device I wanna hear the audio received to. To get this audio into OBS, all I need to do is go to my audio settings and then for my desktop audio or even my mic auxiliary device, I can just select caster stream mix. But now we just need to double check our stream settings. So if we go back to the output tab, under advanced, we'll stay within the streaming tab. We're gonna try to use the hardware encoder, set the bit rate to 5,000, keyframe interval is good at two. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's stream. And my, oh my, things are running just as good as they were when we were doing the recording test. We're only looking at an eight to 20% CPU utilization max. I even gave it a shot recording and streaming at the same time. And by my surprise, it still worked very smoothly doing a 1080p 60 FPS recording. But then looking at the stream, I found that it appeared to be in 30 FPS. So it looks like it's not encoding up to 60, but at least we can do a 30 FPS stream and record in 60 FPS. So luckily with YouTube, you can push your bit rate much higher than six, 7,000 kilobits per second compared to a platform like Twitch. So that's exactly what we tried to do. I pushed this thing up to over 13,000 kilobits per second using the hardware encoder and the gameplay quality looked much better, especially when there's a lot of motion or action. And this computer held up perfectly fine. I'm, dude, I'm like at a loss for words. I, I cannot believe how this is performing. Yeah, I experienced a little bit of drop frames, but that's because first off I'm on Wi-Fi and my upload speed maxes out at about 22, 23 megabits per second. That's all I got. You guys can roast me for not having spectacular internet, but <laughs> it's much better than what it was. Trust me. I know you guys are wondering, well, what about Streamlabs desktop? Does that perform just as well? And spoiler alert, it does. Using the same settings, utilizing the hardware encoder of this M2 chip on the MacBook Air, everything was running very fine. I didn't have any problems streaming or recording using Streamlabs. I tested this out using the X264 software encoder options, and this is where you're gonna experience heavy CPU usage and those drop frames that nobody wants. So just stay away from that. But I think for some future enhancements I'd love to see is first off, Elgato, can you guys please get us like the 4K utility tool for Mac OS and have it run on an M1 or M2 chip. C can we get that please? That'd, that'd be awesome. And then second for the hardware encoder, I'd love to see that be able to be controlled at a constant bit rate. Having that fluctuate all over the place between 1000 and 20,000 kilobits per second, depending on where you put it, can make it very challenging, especially if you're trying to stream. For those of you guys that don't have a really solid upload internet speed, you really aren't gonna be able to use the hardware encoder because it's gonna fluctuate so crazy that your connection's just gonna cut out at some point. I also hope later this year we can get an M1, M2 chip OBS application that's native to that chipset to get the best performance possible and also have all the plugins work as well. There's an unofficial version out there floating about that you can download, but it might not work with everything that you need. So keep that in mind if you're gonna try that. But my goodness guys, for a device this small and compact with no fan, I cannot believe it. And I didn't find that the slower SSD affected anything, it seemed to be a non issue and I just love the fact that this thing is dead silent when recording like it might heat up a little bit I did feel it get hot but it didn't overheat and if you're concerned about overheating issues then you can definitely check out some laptop fans I just said fans fans to curve any concerns of overheating if you're doing intensive stuff like 4k recording streaming I would definitely go m1 pro M1 Max or wait till the M2 Pros and Maxes come out because that's gonna be even better and you'll have the fan and stuff to kind of keep you a little bit safer in that regard. But this is awesome, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something today. If you did, hit it with a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new on here. Don't forget all the links in the description below. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.